So you're a real estate agent or aspiring one, and you're wondering what fees do most realtors charge? Maybe you're curious of what you should be charging, seeing what everybody else is charging. Well, in this video, we're going to go over five different things you may not have thought about and kind of dig a little bit deeper into that to answer that question. So stick around. What's up everybody? This is Tim Whittemore with the Whittemore Group here with LPT Realty here on the Emerald Coast of Florida. That's right here on the Panhandle. If uh, you haven't been here before, we do tons and tons of videos about everything you need to know about real estate, right? Whether you're brand new, you're an aspiring agent, and even a seasoned agent trying to build out big teams, we're going to help you any way that we can, all right? Because I've been through a lot of it. I have been licensed in three different states. I've been that buyer's agent on a team, right? Been the single agent, you know, doing everything. I've been the ops manager of another team and now a team lead and even run two teams in, at the same time in two different states, right? Uh, so I've made a lot of mistakes <laughs> and I want you to be able to learn vicariously through me so you don't make the same ones if you want to venture down this uh, road of awesome real estate. So uh, they always say that you are the sum of the five voices that you listen to. Let me be one of those voices to help you get to the next stage of your career. Okay, without further ado, what fees do realtors charge? Okay, all right, so number one is the easiest one. It's probably one that you're even here for is commission, right? Who charges, what's commission, right? When it comes to commission, it will depend, but at least right now, in the United States here in 2023, the seller negotiates for that commission in most cases, right? You're gonna list a house, right? Or I'm listing a house and I go in, we say, yeah, this is what we're gonna to do to market the house, you should hire me. Great, what are you charging? We'll just say that it's 6%, okay? And they go, great, yeah, you can list the house by 6%. So what happens is in most cases, I take whatever that money is and then I go 50-50, and then I, whoever brings a buyer, they'll get that 3%, okay? So we just said 6%, but I have to tell you that there's no fixed commission. There just isn't. Why? Because if we said that there was, it would be a violation of the Antitrust Act, <laughs> okay? Because it's price fixing, right? So we don't, we don't have it. The, the, if, if you're somebody else out, that's out there that's not an agent, and you're like, oh, I knew that something's going on. No, that's not it. All the commission will depend upon what the market demand is. If you're in an area with a ton of listings, well, your commission's probably gonna go up, right? If there's not a whole ton of listings and, and agents are scrapping for them, your commissions are probably gonna go down, right? That's what we just saw. It is in 2023 right now, when we looked at the two years prior, when it was, the market was really hot, most people were taking commissions at less than 4%, all right? And we saw that across the board, even, even in a place that was really trying to keep the industry going. We even saw 1% listings. It was, it was crazy. I mean, to each their own, right? However, traditionally, we got to split this up. And what we've seen, it will depend upon your marketplace, all right? Uh, I've seen commissions anywhere between 4 and 12% if that helps, all right? Um, but just know that that's kind of how it goes. How is it split up? I said it was 50-50, but that just depends on your market. Even in our market in the panhandle, it's not always 50-50. Matter of fact, a majority of what we see in the Destin market is that the listing agent takes 60% and gives out 40. Why? I don't know. <laughs> when I was in New York, when I was in Ohio, it was always 50-50 across the board. Now, something else that's interesting here is that once you get into the luxury market, almost everything is split 50-50. So it's, it, there's no real rule about it. It's really just dependent upon the area that you're going to and what that commission looks like. So that's your commissions. <laughs> now, I do warn you that we are seeing uh, some different cases out there that it could change that the buyer will have to pay your commission at closing and the seller will pay their commission at closing and the seller doesn't have to pay for the entire thing anymore. Uh, so that could be coming here soon. So get ready, get set. You may have to start advocating for your own commission for buyers. 
All right, the next one we're going to talk about is number two is retainers. Retainers are not sellers necessarily, they're for buyers. And when we see retainers, these are in our exclusive buyer's agreement, okay? So what you can do is when you want to work with a buyer, my suggestion always is to sit down with them and give them kind of a strategy session. In my team, we call it a buyer's consult, which is like a, uh, a structured sort of presentation we do to them. And then we actually ask them to sign that. Now, our team doesn't specifically use retainers, but if you got somebody that you're going to drive around for 10, 12 houses and you're just wasting your time, which is very valuable, gas, everything else, um, you may want to charge something for that. Uh, lawyers do it all the time, um, but that's also skin in the game for them for a retainer for them to use you, okay? Uh, retainers can be whatever you want. It'll be specific to your price point and your marketplace. All right, number three is miscellaneous or brokerage fees. And I'm not going to name any names, but I did have a broker that was trying to make up funds for whatever reason. And that every time that we closed the deal, they charged, or I'm sorry, that had a listing, they charged $395 or $295. It doesn't matter, right? There was just an added fee that they tacked on. It was supposed to be temporary, but they saw that the fee include, just continued to bring in more and more money. And in my personal opinion, they got greedy and they just kept it there, which is very frustrating if you're competing with somebody and you're like, yeah, my brokerage is going to cost, it's going to cost you an extra two ninety five on top of the 6% commission that you're going to have to pay off to the realtors. Why? Because my broker's greedy or whatever, right? I didn't say that, but that was just my personal opinion about the, about the whole thing. Um, but there are miscellaneous fees that do come into that, and each brokerage is different for their own reasons. I know it's just poking fun at this other one, but um, yeah, for whatever reason, there are miscellaneous fees that, that you'll be able to charge. Now, another one is number four is uh, TC or transaction coordination fees. Once you start going, you can get people to work for you to help you close your transactions. Um, and they only get paid if the transaction closed. How cool is that, right? So maybe it's three, 400 bucks or more, depending on your market center. And you just write it into the contract that, hey, they got to pay a TC, a transaction coordination fee at closing for the amount of 400 bucks, whatever it is, right? Now, be careful because there could be some loan products that won't let you put it in, depending upon the states, like VA or something like that. Uh, but know that, yes, you can charge... Uh, fees to your buyers and to your sellers for coordination. And there's actually an interesting one here uh, that I was just thinking of as, as we were writing this out. But the fifth is actually a showing assistant fee. Yeah, so you can actually go out and show homes for real estate agents for a per door fee or a per hour fee or something like that. So you can charge agents other money in order to get a showing assistant fee on top of it. Okay, um, whether you're actually going to show the homes for them or you get so busy that you need another agent to show homes or you know, I don't even think it needs to be a licensed agent in some states uh, to go out and show homes for you. And then when they want to write a contract, you come back, but know that you still have to pay out a fee. And that was kind of cool, <laughs> a way that people do business. But those are the different fees. Now, this is not all inclusive. These are just the common fees that you'll see that uh, you as a realtor can charge. And I'm sure there'll be more. There's always somebody trying to put their hand in the pot, of course. Uh, but if you have any questions or think of any more fees that maybe I missed uh, for the benefit of everybody else, go ahead and leave them here in the comments below. I'd love hearing from you guys. And of course, if you are interested in becoming a real estate agent or our real estate agent, thinking about coming over to LPT Realty or working here with our team, I'd love to chat with you. You can give us a call, text, email, find me on social media. I'd love to connect with you guys uh, to see what we can do to help. But again, my name is uh, Tim Whittemore. I'm here with LPT Realty on the Emerald Coast of Florida, and we'll see you in our next video. Take care.